Um, again, when when the church bought this land back in the 1940s, um, the house the house was removed. Um, but the house that did sit here was was uh, similar to like the Zeno Brown home. It was the home of uh, John Hornet. Now John Hornet was a uh, was a, a very early uh, uh, wholesale pharmacist here in Sioux City, coming in the 1850s or 1860s. He grew his business in, in, into one of the largest medical wholesalers in, in, the, in the middle part of the country. Uh, it went through various name changes to Hornick Moore and Porterfield. It eventually ended up as uh, McKesson and Robbins. And that building was torn down when the Baumgart's building the former Baumgart building downtown uh, was built in the 1980s. Actually, this is a good point to talk uh, some about the church. Um, St. John Lutheran Church, uh, the, uh, uh, date, the church uh, congregation itself dates back in Sioux City to 1876. Uh, it was one of two Norwegian Lutheran churches established within a couple of years uh, of each other. Uh, the original church building was down at 3rd and Jennings. The second church building uh, was built at uh, 6 and Court Street, right across the street from Augustana Lutheran Church, um, with a growing congregation. At that time, uh, about 720 members. Uh, the church saw bigger quarters in 19, 1948 and 49, uh, right in the winter time they bought. Uh, three lots here. Um, and built a church, uh, the main part of the church 19, uh, was built in 1950, opened in 1950-51, and opened in 1952, uh, finally uh, it finished in 1961. Um, there are some uh, neat architectural details uh, I want to show you on the far side of the church. And uh, to go along with what Will was saying earlier, the, this, the church was designed by uh, K.E. Westerland. Uh, Westerland came to Sioux City in 1920, during the construction of the Katy Station building, the Swift building, he had designed that, but he was in Chicago at the time. He came here to supervise the construction, stayed in Sioux City, uh, and designed uh, other familiar structures like the Badger Row building, the Municipal Auditorium, um, St. Paul's uh, Lutheran Church, uh, and just uh, quite a few others. And I don't. I really don't know his in, any associate with, association well, with, with I, Wright or well, I, I mean, possibly Sullivan. I wouldn't be surprised. It seemed like that he was connected back in there somewhere. Else. So was there an addition? Was it smaller to begin with? And then yeah, the original church came to came to the where the steeple oh. is, and you can oh, see okay. the okay the, the okay. castle like motif right above the front door. Mm -hmm. It was just one story, and the steeple and the education wing were added okay. when the building was finished in 1961. Okay. <laughs> So, um, you can see here the cornerstone, 1951. Then the first services weren't held in the church proper until 1952. Um, my dad's sister was uh, the the first child baptized in in, in this church. Um, so. Um, Saying that, uh, one thing I, I wanted to point out of the church architecture itself uh, is is this south facade, which I think is 
is probably the one of the neatest features of the building. Um, if you look where the bay window comes out, right above that, you'll see this uh, concrete motif. You'll see uh, the mirror of it on the other side. Uh, both happen to be eagles, and they're the eagles of St. John the Evangelist. It was his symbol, the church being named after St. John the Evangelist. Now, since we're all standing here, we can look and see what was here before the church. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was on this property. That was right here on this corner. Oh wow. Oh. So this is the house of Pierce's addition, other developer, Daniel T. Hedges. Um, he built this house in 1889. Uh, of course, it, it, it's a Queen Anne Victorian style architecture, which was very popular in Sioux City at the time, and featured this massive four-story turret on the corner. So the house was built in 1889, and I mentioned uh, D.T. Hedges' daughter married Zeno Brown, and Zeno Brown, of course, as I mentioned, built the, the house just up on the other corner of this block. There was really nothing else in between until you know, a few years later when John Hornick built in between. Um, so this house um, stood here until 1933. Well, by 1933, we're long past the depression, the panic of 1893, but we're in the midst of the Great Depression. Uh, and so there's, there's nothing written saying this. I would imagine that no one could afford to live in a house of this side. Even even two cities wealthiest people probably couldn't have. This, this is just a massive house. Although, I want to show you a picture of a house just down the street that was, that was much larger than this. Uh, so again, this house here from 1889 to 1933. So then these lots were, were vacant and made available, and that's when the church bought this land. Yeah, land. What was the square foot? Well, I don't know. It probably had to be like 5,000, 6,000 square feet. So are these homes that were torn down still around in town's windows or pieces of um, the house? Um, the Zeno Brown house. Um, I do know, uh, I don't know where they are now, I do know some of the stained glass out of the Zeno Brown house was salvaged. Um, in the 1930s, I don't think there was any attempt to salvage anything. It's a chance that somebody somebody may have purchased the lumber when they were tearing it down to, to build their own much smaller home around town, but any Victorian details, um, no, probably not. And this one, this actual image shows another house here you can see in the background, uh, which is still over uh, on Nebraska Street. So this is another uh, Queen Anne Victorian. This photo, uh, since I love to talk about our photographers, if you've ever been to any one of my, uh, other of my presentations, uh, this was taken by a gentleman named Charles Taylor. And I love Taylor photos. They were all taken with using glass plate negatives. They're almost all 8x10 glass plate negatives. Um, the museum doesn't own them, but we have we have prints of all of them. Uh, Taylor only lived in Sioux City from 1890 to 1893, so we know every every image of his we have, which are there are about 200, are all from that area. It's just mm -hmm. it's a it's a wonderful little slice of Sioux City at the time. We're actually going to see at least two more of his images through this tour. So uh, actually. Yeah, we'll cross the street before we talk about the next house. 